We sing you the grace, mercy, and deeds of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ this morning on the second Sunday after Pentecost. Our text for this message today is from 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37, and reads as follows. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, you will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Here's the text. Please join me in prayer. Father, we ask, Lord, for your blessings upon the meditation of your word as we seek, O Lord, your counsel, your wisdom, for what we as a congregation are being called by you to do. Help us, O Lord, to know what your will is in this great matter of uh, issue that faces before us, so that, O Lord, the decision will be indeed blessed by you, and we will head into the future with great blessings from your hand. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends in Christ, so I'm approaching about three years here serving in Christ the King. Most of you might already know that I'm what you call a lectionary preacher. A lectionary preacher is one that looks at one of the texts that's assigned for that Sunday, either from the Old Testament or the Epistle or the Gospel, and then derives the message from that series of three. The reason why I like that lectionary is because the fact it gives a continuity to the Christian life as we journey from the moment of the birth of Jesus Christ to the death and resurrection and then through after the Easter season we journey with Jesus and grow in his preaching and his travels and his miracles and just having that cycle of life repeat itself is very spiritually endearing and enriching. So I kind of like to be a lectionary preacher. The second thing I like about lectionary preacher is I try to be ecumenical whenever I can. You know what the word ecumenical is? We want to try to all be together. Whether you're Catholics or Lutherans or Reformed, well, if most of the churches are using these readings that we have today. And though we have our disagreements among us, at least we sign on to saying that these are the readings that the church needs to hear today. And that's I kind of like lectionary preaching. Two reasons. Continuity to the lifestyle of the Christian faith. And just a statement that despite our divisions, we still have some sense of unity among the Christian church. But today I'm venturing off the lectionary. Because I feel that this congregation is being pushed by our Lord to make a major, major decision. You know? And so, when I look back at the lectionary, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Today, we may have the chance to look at it, as I believe the Lord has called me to say, we've got to go line up a decision to face today. Now, I know it's not a decision we're going to be making today, but you're going to be receiving a lot of information. And believe me, being on the building committee, this information will be overwhelming. They've spent a lot of hours looked at all sorts of options, trying to figure out God's will, master's plan for this parish. And they're going to present their findings to you this afternoon. And it is a lot to process. There's a lot to think through. I'm sure that after you hear the report, you will be agreeing. That's a lot of information. That when we want to talk about going into battle with Goliath, what that really means is that we go in facing a handicap. The handicap that David faced, according to Goliath, was his size. He's big. David was small. And when David went to Saul and asked for permission to go ahead and bring the battle to Goliath, Saul was quite said, you're just a young youth. And Goliath has been a warrior for many years. What are the chances that you have to bring honor to Israel? What are the chances that you're going to get out of this alive? Saul was looking at things from a human perspective and not from a divine. David was looking at things from a divine perspective and not human. Sometimes those perspectives do not agree. So, as we go into this battle with 
this Goliath before us, our future. It is important to kind of look at what we have available and to know whether or not do we go with the field of dreams mentality. You know, if you build it, they will come. Maybe we need to change that phrase and say, if you go with God's will, you will not be denied. If you go with God's will, you will not be denied. So how do we face this Goliath? Well, look at what David did. You know, if we're going to face a Goliath, our Goliath is handicapped. With size, our Goliath is we really don't know the future. Wouldn't it be wonderful if somehow we could have a crystal ball and look down the road 50 years and say, whatever decision we made next month was the decision that really benefited this church, and not just this church, but the kingdom of God? Wouldn't it be wonderful to have that crystal ball? We don't got it! That's our handicap. There'd be a little bit of a chance, a risk involved, so to speak. When we go into that area of risk and chance, you need to go into prayer with God, asking Him to discern His will for you in this parish. So we journey in, and the building committee is going to give you a wealth of information, and that's what we need. We need to go and face this alive, prepare for this battle of looking at this uncertain future with as much knowledge and wisdom as we can have. David, he had to figure it out, right? I mean, he had the option to go and saw some armor. You know the old story, and David tried the armor, he couldn't even move around in it. How could I even, you know, fight a guy like that size and this stuff? I'll definitely be defeated. And his wisdom and knowledge said, you know, God has prepared me for this battle with the slingshots. And Saul's like, really? Slingshots are going to bring the Goliath down? But David knew. That was his talent that God had given him, and that was the weapon of choice he would use to take down Goliath. So today, the building committee, as I should be, is going to give you a wealth of information, and uh, they're going to do this to you. They're going to give you three doors. <laughs> Let's make a deal. Behind what door do you believe is the best future for Christ? what door is the best future for Christ the King? That's the question. You're going to get the information that you need, knowledge and wisdom from this committee today, they've done a fabulous job, to hopefully process the wisdom and knowledge section. Today as a pastor, my job is to give you the other tool you need, the best help I can give you, spiritual discernment. What is God's will? How do we discern God's will when we're looking at these three doors? Let's look at David again as he battles Goliath. How did he determine that he was going to win this battle? Small size as he was against this gigantic human being. It was this. When he journeyed to go visit his brothers who were stationed at the battlefield, David got quite upset. Who is this Philistine who defies God's armies? You are just going to stand around and let this happen because you're scared? You're afraid? God's name is being defied. And you just let this happen. It was happening for 40 days. Can you believe it? 40 days, Goliath would come out and say, choose one of you guys among us and we'll make the decision of the battle. Whoever wins, well then, the loser has to be our slaves and vice versa. 40 days, Goliath was out defying the armies of Israel. And David just had it listening to it once. Why are you letting this go on? The reason, according to the narrative, because they were scared. They were very afraid. Who could stand up against this Goliath? And David just really believed that 
God is going to stand up with anybody who is going to take down an individual who dares to defy God's glory. And so, he asks for permission from Saul. And with confidence, he goes into the battle already knowing who's going to win. That's the spiritual discernment that we talk away from day to day, is whatever door we walk through in July, just want to make sure you guys say it's the best door to the glory of God. Because if we choose the wrong decision, and even a decision of doing nothing is a decision, if that's not God's will, we will not be blessed. Our blessing is in conjunction with the determining what God's will is. And I'm not here nor the building committee here today to share you what they think God's will is today. The building committee is just giving you knowledge and wisdom today. I'm trying to give you how to find spiritual discernment in the scriptures today. And then we're going to have you for a month sweat out. <laughs> Best thing to do, right? I've said this in Bible class over and over again the time that, you know, how good is a teacher when they're going to give an exam to you as a student. And before they give you the exam, they already give you all the answers. Do you grow through that? I don't think you do. We're not really here to give you the answers today. We're here to give you the tools so you can find what God's answer is for this future of this congregation. I pray fervently and sincerely whatever that decision is is the decision that is on God's side. Because that's how David went in. He knew God was on his side. He wasn't going to lose. That's the kind of confidence that we hope to have. <clears throat> Come July, we make this decision with confidence. But this is God's will. And if therefore it is God's will, we cannot lose. If you build it, they will come. If you follow God's will, you will not be denied. Carefully consider those things. But I want you to recognize this that the safest and the easiest answer is not always the right answer. What do you think the safest answer for David would have been? To run with the army away from Goliath? That was the safest answer, right? It was the easiest answer, too. But James has something to tell us today in his epistle that the easy answer doesn't help us grow. James chapter 1, verse 2, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and that endurance have its perfect results, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let them ask of God, who gives to all generosity, generously and without reproach. And here's the promise. It will be given him. Notice that it's not it may, it will be given to him. The safest and easiest answer is not always the right answer. And sometimes the right answer isn't always going to come easy. Think about it for King David. How many stones did he take? Remember? Five. So he has to be thinking this, right? That. <laughs> I may miss with that first shot. I may miss with the second shot. I may miss with the third. I may miss with the fourth. But I miss with the fourth. I know I will land it on the fifth. So he came prepared knowing that this answer, God's will, is not going to happen just like that. Although it did in the first shot. But he was prepared to go through a little bit of a lengthy battle bringing five stones with him. The right decision will not always come easy. Same thing we look at our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as he worked out salvation in this world. What was God's will for his son? Was his will for Jesus to get off that donkey and Palm Sunday and go home and hide? Was his will for his son to run away from the garden of Gethsemane as Jesus is praying, not my will, but your will be done. Was his will to run away from the cross? No, no. His will was to go to the cross. To 
right answer is not always the easiest answer. Jesus goes to that cross and thank God he does. He follows his Father's will because he does. We are blessed. Salvation, forgiveness, eternal life. So think about it for a month. Pray about it for a month. That's my encouragement. That's the building committee's encouragement. To have you on your knees. Asking for God's will and his servant. Knowing that what James tells us today, if anyone of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all generously without reproach, and will be given to him. Focus on the giants, and you're going to stumble. Focus on God. Giants stumble. Hold on to this wonderful promise of God. If you lack wisdom, pray for him. He will give it to you. In his name. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.